We have with us in the studio this morning Alhaji Rabiu, Isiaku Rabiu, who is the chairman of IRS Group. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Mao. It's a pleasure. Well, what do you make of this suspension? I mean, the papers have couched it in different ways. Some think that this is wisdom on the part of the president to suspend this plan for now. Right. Um, and some just say, well, the presidency has bowed to pressure, uh, you know. How are you reading this? Do you think it bowed to pressure? Do you think it is wisdom? I think it depends on how you interpret it. If you want to interpret it positively, you could say government is uh, sensitive to the feeling of the citizenry and it has a listening ear. And people have complained and have protested and there has been some misconception about this program and government has suspended it for a review. If you want to be negative, you can see government has bowed under pressure and have suspended the program. So it depends on the kind of interpretation you want to have. But I think if you want to interpret it positively, you can say that government has listened to the people and has realized that there is misconception or lack of proper communication to the stakeholders and has decided to review the situation. But if you notice the communique that was given by Governor Omahi of uh, Ibonyi State, he said that it was suspended because it was a program that was initiated and implemented by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture alone. And if that is the case, and you know ministries can come up with programs on their own merit, and if that is the case and presidency feels that that is the wrong thing and is not consistent with the NEC program where the governors and the vice president is chairing and the governors have bought into it, which takes into account the issue of displaced people, the issue of reorganizing or setting up uh, uh, grazing areas for this uh, cattle, then you would uh, interpret that positively. Mm. So I imagine that what you're doing, or I imagine that you are reading it positively, is that right? I am. I am. Because I don't think if a government suspends a program on which there is a very loud outcry from the public, you should interpret that positively. It's not a military regime. This is a democratic setting. And the government is there to serve the people. Mm -hmm. And if the government is coming up with a program which in its wisdom makes it think that it is doing its constitutional duty by protecting lives and, and, and property and is bringing an initiative that would help reduce that, that should be a positive development. However, if the people that this is being done for feel that it is a wrong program and government says, okay, we are listening, let us review, let us look at the situation, then it should be something that should be looked at uh, positively. Now, under the review from the communique, it is said that the office of the vice president that is heading this uh, program, the governor's forum, the National Council on Food Security, and all other agencies that are related to this will be put together to be able to advise and form a, 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 a way to implement the program seamlessly in a way that is uh, productive and the, the issue of violence and killings can be reduced and productivity of our animals and the herders can be improved as far as their lives are concerned. Well, it is interesting that, I mean, indeed, the Ministry of Agriculture can come up with its own uh, plans and they can implement the plans by themselves. However, when we look at the fact that the National Economic Council was already coming up with a solution right. and they already came up with one. In fact, it would seem that the governors defended this Ruga, some of the governors defended this Ruga settlement plan, thinking that it was the same livestock, the National Livestock Transformation Policy, right. uh, which they had agreed at the National Economic Council. Uh, how do you think that this is going to hamper that plan now that the, that the National Economic Council has come up with? I think uh, the National Economic Council plan is the original plan that government came up with. The president approved that under the able leadership of the vice president. The governors bought into it, they were involved. I remember this, uh, this uh, fora about uh, this state buying in and this state no buying in does not even have to come up because it is a voluntary program. It is not going to be forced onto any state. Mm -hmm. If you are not interested, you don't have to buy into it. If you are interested and you think there is an opportunity for your state to be able to 
increase your IGR to be able to provide opportunities for herders to come and establish businesses and for investors to, to, to add on to that, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a focus that you can, you can look at. But if, if you don't want to be part of it, then it's your, you know, it's your, it's your right not to be. Mm. So I think there is a confusion. You know, the Ministry of Agriculture can come up with programs that are credible, that they think is going to, is their mandate. But if the presidency on its own is coming up with a program, remember the primary objective of government is the protection of life and property, first and foremost. So this problem has been bringing about violence and death and destruction of farmlands, of cattle rustling issue, the herders themselves, the farmers themselves, and it has, it has added to our insecurity problem. Now, if government does not do anything about it, they say, look at this government, it's not doing about this very huge problem. Now, government is trying to do something about it, and people are complaining. And remember, this issue of uh, cattle rearing has been something that has been happening forever. Yeah, but people, people are complaining based on, you know, mis well, they're complaining based on what you say was a miscommunication. If, if there is a miscommunication and the policy is not well understood, of course they'll complain. Of course I'm not complaining that there's a miscommunication, miscommun but that is a learning curve. If you communicate something falsely, no, not falsely, but uh, barely enough for people, for stakeholders to understand, then there is a problem. I think what should have happened is from day one, before the pronouncement of this program, government should have engaged stakeholders, the states, the Mieti Allah, the farmers, the cattle ranchers, and show them this is the program we have. Mm. What are your inputs? What do you think is good? What do you think is bad? What do you think is possible? Because it's not going to be a zero-sum game where somebody alone wins. It's going to be something that is going to be a win-win situation. Understand and agree and then discuss it and then bring out the program. But I think there is certainly a miscommunication issue and that it's also lack of coordination. Because if the Federal Minister of, of Agriculture had watched what is happening at the presidency, they probably would have added their own input to what the presidency is doing, and it can come out as one program. But I think it's also a, an issue of uh, communication. You call it uh, herders, uh, grazing reserve, you call it a colony, you call it Ruga. You call... It's a national livestock transformation plan. And I think it is just that. And this is being done in order to address the issue of the uh, um, issue that people are at the camps, you know, to be able to address them, to be able to reduce the grazing routes that these uh, cattle herders are going around, you know, with their cattle, which eventually becomes issue because they go into farms, and farmers, of course, will resist that. Mm -hmm. And in another case, their cattle will be rustled, and they will resist that, therefore ending in a, a, a violence and death. Well, let's quickly bring in our, our other guests now. Mr. Kach Ononuju is an economist. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. Well, you have seen the huge controversy which trailed this Ruga settlement plan. Um, and now it has been suspended by the federal government. Can you tell us your immediate thoughts? I do not trust the government. We understood this to be an old plan of the Mayat Allah. It's called DAS. Demography alterations came. Uh, like uh, my gentleman friend just explained, what he's explained are the rhetorics being bandied about and what we believe this to be. Uh, this is just uh, trying to change the narratives. What we see on the ground is there are now two schemes. The original scheme, we had a period of ethnic cleansings. People are cleansed of their land. As I'm talking to you right now, Nigerians are spread all over the north in displaced persons camps. Why not return them back to their homes and their homelands? What we now see, those homelands are now being taken over, and the people we see on those homelands don't speak Hausa. I'm sorry, which... Don't speak, that's what I'm telling no, you. No, I, no. I came myself from Bundu. I went to Kwatrakwashi last weekend. I went to Kankara when I was called. When I drove there, I'm sorry, can the you person I met was speaking Mr. French. Mr. Mr. Anonuju, please yes. just calm down a moment now. I want you to tell us... I mean, if you're mentioning states in the north, can you tell us where this place is? This in Abuja, place? there is here. Mm -hmm. In, in uh, Plateau State, there is there. I have been myself to Ankara. 
I've been to Dangobi. Can you say where the states are? These are in Zampara State. I don't know where the states are. In Zampara are. State, yes. I've been to Anka. Yes. In Zampara State, I've been to Malili. In Zampara State, I've been to Dansadaw. In Zampara, I've been to Dangobi. I've been to Maru. Last week, in Kasina State, I went to Kwaterakwashi. So along the Kwaterakwashi, Kankara, Funtua Road, I saw Hausa youths blocking the road. And when I asked, what is this? They say their people are being killed and the government is not doing anything. I noticed that a lot of the headsmen that I talked to, they don't speak English. They don't speak Hausa. Because I said, hey, he said, he kept quiet. I said, may I say, why, 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 why is he not talking? He kept quiet. And they say, hey, they should talk speaking French. And they say, two French, and they say, oui. and he say, we, he starts feeling comfortable. And I should talk, Continue to talk. I found some of these people are from Mali, so from Mauritania. Now, what we are saying is, are we having settlements built for imported populations? Because as I'm talking to you right now, there are no Nigerians from Kanu, from Sokoto, from Kasina applying to be moved from their current homes into bushes somewhere else. It does not exist anywhere in this country. So we see a strategy to import populations from the sub-region and then use them to displace and alter demographics. This is not, that's why the government, when they say they're suspending, I don't, if you watch President Buhari's his way, he employs Takia. And I understand the Polaco very well. So yes, he could say one thing because as the gentleman rightly mentioned, it's the same Takia he uses, deception. He said first grazing reserve, the country said no. He came back again, he said, cow colony. We said no. Because the only thing in this game is land. And we know the land. I'm sorry, Mr. Anonujo, I have to interrupt you. Yes, please. Um, you know, all that you have said or all that you are driving towards would seem to be a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. You know, it is what is going on. You, know, may, may I, you may be in the studio. I, I am telling you, I have been to the ground. I, I, I am being led by the fact. I don't may, want to talk about conspiracy may, theory. May, 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 you could buy the narrative I, from government. May I, I tell you the truth I, of what I've seen in the field. May I ask you, you know, because you have talked about a DAS. Yes, the a, DAS is the where, demographic alteration moment, scheme. That's moment. what it's been. You say that you, you came across the DAS from the Mieti Allah. It's been there for long. That's why you saw the where, dust where, just intended. A moment, yes. did, you, did you see it as a policy? Did they bring it out as a policy paper? Or is it something you're privy to um, of Mieti Allah? Because I think it's also I am privy to it, just, yes. Just a moment. It's important to also say that the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association, they say they are the Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria. They call themselves Makban. They're not Mieti Allah of West Africa. So if you say that you're privy to this, is this Mieti Allah of West Africa or is this Mieti Allah of Nigeria? Which one of them? The Mieti Allah is a cultural organization, as they call themselves. And they've been on for a very long time. Under the previous administration, Good Lord Jonathan's administration, in my eyes, they came to the villa, they presented flag, certificates, they made requests to President Good Lord. President Good Lord listened to them and politely declined. Why did he decline? What request did they make to him? They made a request for grazing reserve. President Goodluck said no, he couldn't do that because Governor Suswan of Benue said he has experience. He cannot give an inch of land for this. So it didn't start today. When President Goodluck refused, President Buhari came in. The mate Allah went back to President Buhari. President Buhari now started the issue of grazing reserves. The country refused. I, 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 I'm trying to just no, trace it from no, where no, this is. It, you are it didn't just come today. I, I'm sorry, you are yes. tracing it because, you know, we have been on this program for quite a while now. We have been on this issue for quite a while. And we have listened to different perspectives. Exactly. There are those who say that, I mean, ranches are not new to Nigeria. There are those who say that grazing reserves, too, are not new to Nigeria. That, indeed, some states have land gazetted for grazing reserves that those lands have now been taken over. In, on this program, we have heard the Laduga instance, for, in, uh, for example, where there was land allocated for this issue in, uh, in Kaduna State. And now that land has now been taken over by 
you know, or, or is now being used for a, a no, purpose. No, no, it, it was upgraded into an emirate. That's in, what the into, people say. Into a purpose that is now different. But in, initially, it was meant for people who had cattle to come in, graze, and then, you know, go. The Attorney General of Kaduna State, former Attorney General of Kaduna State, was here on the program explaining just how that land was meant to have been used. Now, there might be other issues around, you know, there might be fears around how this, uh, you know, this land, uh, what the settlements could do in future. However, when you come up with this plan, is this something that you have seen, uh, you know, being brought in from somewhere, or is it something that you think could happen as a result of if this plan was implemented? It is something that has happened before now. I, as a child, I schooled in Joss. I went to a place called Hickory School. When I was in school, the British were there. The Fulani only existed at Tidham Fulani on the Bauchi Toro Joss Road. Today, they are killing in mainland Joss. They want Brekin Lady, they want Riam. So, people, because of the history of the past, are afraid. Now, the president has not been honest, as you've known, if we are to actually look at it, what it is. Agriculture it has nothing to do with the federal government. These issues of land and agriculture is state. It's got nothing to do with the federal government. It, Why uh, is the federal it, government trying to force itself? It, it's on, there's the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, and it definitely has a role to play good. in terms of... It does not have a role to country, play on ethnicity. It does not have a role to play. It has a role to play for Nigeria, not for an ethnic group. Not also when you now see the ethnic group being given a radio station. Not for the same thing that now you see people's land are to be taken. What I'm telling you now is why doesn't this government return the internally displaced people? The place of my growth as a child is just. I go to just, I see people displaced. Why are they not returned back to their homelands? Why is the government trying to now impose people to resettle on that land? Mm. Is this very difficult to understand? Well, this well, is well, what we are saying. We will come back to that. The government uh, is not sincere. Mr. Nanoji, we'll come back to that in just a moment. But let me ask you, Amal Adjirabiu, what do you make of this controversy, this um, conspiracy, for want of a better phrase, conspiracy theory? Because these are fears that people have. These are some of the things that they've heard, and these are some of the things that they think could happen as a result of the plans of the federal government. I think, I think it's not fears. I think it's cynicism. I think it's pessimism. I think it's misinterpretation of the very good policies that are being churned out by government. Be it Governor President Buhari, be it President Jonathan. I think one thing that is critically important for us as a nation and as a people is to identify areas and issues that are going to be positive and productive for us as a people and as a nation. I think the issue of tribalism, the issue of uh, diversity that should have helped us move forward should not be what we are discussing. This is a global pro pro program. The whole world is watching us. My brother here is somebody I love and respect. I feel he is me and I feel I am him because we are Nigerians. I don't feel the difference between us in terms of religion or tribe or ethnicity or any such thing. Why can't we come together and identify areas that are problematic? If a northerner is killed, it's the same as if a southerner is killed because we are all Nigerians. Government has the I responsibility. Think I think it's important to differentiate. So right. He's talked about you know, Land all, all of us being, he says, I mean, he, he, he claims plateau state. He, he identifies a plateau state as his own home right, state. Right. However, you know, he's talked about non-Nigerians coming into Nigeria. Right. Uh, isn't that something, I mean, I, I, for, I, don't, I do not no, know what, Ma, what Ma to make Pei of it. If we're talking about, about, we about non-Nigerians coming into right, Nigeria, shouldn't right. we uh, I think, be I think it's a discuss? valid point and yeah. I expect him to say that government should try and strengthen our borders and avoid that from happening. But we are 200, estimated to be 200 million people. How many foreigners can come and invade this country to take over our lands? What is the issue of land grabbing? If, if this program is going to be implemented, it can be implemented in the north because the land is vast. So, and the government came out with this program as a voluntary program that you could buy into it. So a plateau state, or Benue state, 
or Tarabo State or any other states that has the advantage of lush green uh, areas where these cattle can, 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 can graze are not interested, it's fine. But they can look back and say, okay, this is a national program. What can we do mm. to add value to it? We have unemployed youth. Why don't we provide intervention for this youth to be able to grow pasture the, the, the and then shift is, to the areas that are program, needed? The, which program right now is the question? Because one program now has brought suspicion. Let us be clear that there, there it seems to be two different programs. And one of the reasons why the federal government has told us this Ruga project thing was suspended was because it was not in tandem with the National Livestock Transformation Plan. Right. So it was seen that, because let us also remember that when this Ruga settlement controversy broke out, the office of the vice president dissociated itself from it and said, we know nothing about that. It did. That it did not come from us. It, it did. Yes, it did. So, it did. so it the question appeared. is, which program are we talking about here? Is it the Ruga settlement, it's, it's which a very, the Benue state government well, it's alerted Nigeria It's a very to, clear or is it position. the National Life no, it's a very clear position. Transformation Program? Because the Ruga program is said to have been initiated and implemented by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Whether that is true or not, it does not matter because the powers that be, the President, the Vice President, the Governor's Forum, the National Council on Food Security, and all other related agencies are now going to come together to implement this program. And I think credit should be given where it is due. If a mistake is made and the government realizes it's a mistake and it corrects it, I don't think it should be met with cynicism and suspicion and doubt. Why don't we become more positive and say, let us give it a chance? Why don't we be, it's, it's not going to be a zero sum game. These are Nigerians coming together to do things that will avoid the situation where violence occurs, where death occurs, where people lose uh, crops in their farms, where cattle wrestlers, um, cattle breed uh, herders lose their cattle. The pessimism and the suspicion and the negativities, I, I really feel for government. Mm. Because but, government oh, can oh, come oh, out oh, of so many good programs, but yes. the interpretation, the stakeholders are important. Yes. But the interpretation, if it's not positive, will not move us forward. You know, but have you, would you say that, I mean, there is that problem of communication. Would you say that government itself has done enough to enlighten people on what the problems are. If indeed, I mean, uh, of course people were killed, and um, we've seen so-called herders-farmers conflict, and we've been told that the people who commit these atrocities oftentimes come from outside. People have asked the question, this plan, is it to settle those who are coming from outside, or is it to settle conflicts between local herders and farmers? That is the question. This plan is not an event, it's a process. This problem has been on for many, many years. And we know we started this uh, cattle uh, ranching uh, issue since 1951, when uh, Mokwa Ranch and Obudu and Akumu in Odo State were established by the colonial uh, rulers. Then in 1958, the colonial rulers came up with a program called Fulani um, um, Amenities Program. That is to settle them in one area, provide them with pasture and water and veterinary services and maybe some housing and clinics and schools. In 1963, forest reserves were converted to grazing reserves. In 1965, the grazing reserve law was established. 1966, we had the military coup. This entire program went off course. And we did not have visionary leaders that would see the opportunities in this value chain of uh, cattle rearing. Until 1978, when the Land Use Decree was, was made, which is now Land Use Act. Ah, the Land thought. Use Act now puts ownership of land in the states. And any state that sees an opportunity in this sector can take advantage of that. And I cannot be clearer than what, the, what Governor Omahi said. Are we going to be thinking that Druga program is the issue or are we going to concentrate on what the federal government led that by the president and a program that is being headed by the vice president and all the governors in the governor's forum are going to be part of that program and the National Council on Food Security is going to be there and all other related agencies are going to be part of this program. The question is which program? National Livestock Transformation Plan. That is the th only thing that is working. That is what he said. Mm -hmm. He said that the governor Omahi, mm -hmm. Ibonyi state governor, mm -hmm. said that the Ruga program mm -hmm. 
is not in tandem with the national livestock uh, plan of the uh, federal government. It was an initiative of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and that has now been scrapped or suspended. Now, can you tell me a situation why you think all the state governors, led by the vice president and all other related agencies will sit down and come up with a conspiracy theory to take land? Land from who? In any case, if this thing is being looked upon as a northern thing, there's enough land in the, in the, in the, in the north. So for me, I would say if other states are not interested, it is within their right. But as Nigerian states also, they can contribute to this program without livestock necessarily going to their states. Come back to the states that are willing and invest money, call investors. The government's responsibility in this case is to provide, infra states will provide land, mm -hmm. government will contribute and states will contribute to provide infrastructure, pasture, dam, veterinary clinics, and maybe some developmental facilities like clinics and schools and markets for this hardest. So it will be interesting to see, I mean, if states were the ones who came up with this in, in tandem with the federal government, came up with this National Livestock Transformation Plan, of course, I mean, they will be interested in something that they came up with. Perhaps what they're not interested in is what the federal government's ministry, a ministry on the, uh, the federal government came up by itself unilaterally. You hit the nail right on the head. There is no doubt about that. And it is said that this is a program by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. The president approved the suspension of this RUGA program. Mm -hmm. The vice president has been heading this national livestock even transformation though, even program. Though in, in that, uh, even in the vice president's office uh, communication, there, is, there are questions to be asked. Okay. You know, when you look at the line of communication and, and what we have seen, but, you know, let's leave that aside. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nanuju, let me ask you, now that this project has been suspended, you say you still do not trust government, is that no, right? I don't trust no government. I don't trust Buhari. President Buhari is... So he's heading the government. Is now, not, let me just say, now, come on, he's my president. And what he has done is what I will look and I will say. The gentleman is right. There are rhetorics painted by government, but non-state actors are the ones you saw doing what the governor say. This is not what we said. Doing what the vice president say, I'm not part of this. But what so, do you mean non-state actors? Good. Who are those non-state actors that are, if he says the government is not in line with the importation of those populations, take your cameras, put them on the street, Talk to any of those headsmen with this, and you will find that they don't speak Hausa, they don't speak English. Any Perhaps I speak full for day. <laughs> Listen, if there is no full man in Nigeria that does not speak full for day. I grew here, I schooled here, I speak Hausa, I do full food, I do all that. So for me to be in Kankara, and I now talk to somebody, I say, Kei, Kei Mutemwe now, he kept quiet. And the house has told me... I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Mr. Now, what I'm we we, we cannot this. use one instance. And you've I'm not given, using one instance. You, I have exactly. talked about I think just, it's extremely important I will for also us. tell you about Benue yeah, State. Just a moment, Mr. Yes. Anonujo. It, it, I think it's very important that we have a tempered discussion here. You know, so that you can, we can hear ourselves. It, it, you cannot use one instance to say that for you asked one person and the person couldn't speak and as such it means that they are important populations. I did not ask one person. Now let me land. If you say that you went to Zamfara State and indeed there has been a problem, you know, of conflict in Zamfara State, a huge problem where even the locals believe that their lands are about to be taken. However, if you talk about Fulanese, so to speak, trying to take over populations, isn't it affecting fellow Fulanese as well? No, then very good. Now, that's a good question. Because the Fulanese that we have seen during the shootings and the killings are Fulanese from the French-speaking countries. The fellow Fulanese in Nigeria, who these things affect, it is their own reputation. Because the local Fulanese in Nigeria are not doing it. So why has the government kept quiet? Very simple. It serves the intentions of government to actually have those populations cleanse up those lands so that those people that want to be resettled can be resettled. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, as I'm talking to you right now, uh, excuse wait, me, sorry. not let, one let, single let, let person. Me, let me understand this. What you're saying is that it suits the purpose of government exactly. for, for local Fulani populations to be cleansed. No, 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 and no. Then outside not for Fulani, local Fulani populations. Uh, Fulani populations are not being cleansed. Houses are being cleansed. 
Bachamans are being cleansed in Newman. Thieves are being cleansed in Benue. Birums are being cleansed in Plateau. Uh, uh, Jukuns. Kakas, Pansas so, are being cleansed in So how would you Gimbu. suggest, I mean, we recently have a problem on our hands. How would you suggest then that we now marry because you know we have still seen herdsmen moving around the federal capital territory yes. we've seen them moving around they have done that for years and we're saying this cannot continue how do you suggest that we settle our local herdsmen in you know in settlements so that they can actually practice modern uh you know agricultural practices the language used is national livestock program if you go to livestock what i call it myself in classes i teach is the protein farming industry. Now, protein farming industry is huge. If government actually wants to bring an intervention in the protein market, you could do this, and everybody who is involved in protein business, whether it is pig farming, whether it is goat farming, whether it is chicken farming, whether it is a cattle husbandry, you partake. States will then do what they want to do. If, however, the government insists on helping the Fulanese who come from outside the country. That is their program. Why don't you look at those Bufa states like Kasina, Kalu, Jigawa, Zampara, Sokoto, so that as the cattle come in, you stop them on the Bufa zones and then put water for them. Why would you not take cattle from Kanu to go and resettle in Abakeleke and then use Governor Omahi to be speaking grammar on television. Well, I think that Governor Omahi can speak very well for himself. And he has spoken very clearly that, that, that they were not a part of the Ruga plan. What they are a part of Good. is a national livestock transformation That's why I'm plan. asking you, but if they're not part to, of the plan, we, why we, does the plan exist? We have to wrap up this particular segment, uh, gentlemen. We have to thank you both. Just a minute, uh, Malfrey. I need to explain this. Government has to do something. It must do something. And it is doing something. We are losing lives, we are losing property, and we must try to interpret positively what plans and programs government is bringing. However, we need to ensure that there is clear communication to the stakeholders, and they have to buy in. Anybody who is not interested does not have to be part of the program. Okay. And this is not well, for... Well, Mr. is going to ask for his own one minute as well. But My one minute is let the states mm -hmm. look at the law. Allow the laws. The states can deal with the agriculture. Mm -hmm. If Buhari is serious, give money to those states. Let them block the people who come in. Because this is two ways. They, if you want to do protein business and you want to help those who farm protein, Give the states money. Let them farm protein any way they want. If it's chicken, if it's goat, if it's cow or piggery. Let them do that. Okay. Don't do an ethnic game it and is... then bring people to come and kill Nigerians, displace them to seize their land. It's a, fine, it's a, it's a fine place to live. In. Gentlemen, we have to go, I'm afraid. <laughs> we, we, we have to go right now. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Alhaji Rabiu Isaki Rabiu is the chairman of IIS Group. And Mr. Kach Ononuju is an economist.